I want to thank the uh, organizers uh, for the invitation. And I apologize for this long and uh, somewhat incoherent uh, title. Uh, but given the, uh, the theme and the context uh, of this uh, symposium, uh, I thought it uh, might be uh, appropriate and uh, interesting to talk about these uh, two very different uh, stories. So first, uh, a very short story uh, about uh, an uh, uh, anti-arrhythmic natural uh, compound. So in addition to my lab at Columbia, uh, I have a satellite lab uh, at uh, the Kunming Institute of uh, Zoology in China, where we set up an ion channel research and a drug uh, development center. The uh, uh, focus there is more on uh, translational research, and we focus on two uh, main uh, uh, projects, uh, search for uh, natural compounds targeting different types of uh, ion channels, uh, compounds mainly from uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, and another one is uh, on uh, ion channel re uh, related diseases. Uh, so as we all know, uh, natural compounds represent, oops, represent um, some of the most uh, specific and uh, potent uh, um, uh, um, ion channel targeting um, molecules, including uh, molecules from uh, plants and uh, animal toxins. So uh, at ICDC, uh, we set up uh, different uh, ion channel, oops, guess, um, screening uh, um, tools, and we screened more than 1,000 uh, natural products and found many ion channel uh, stimulators and uh, inhibitors. Uh, one of those uh, molecules is called uh, AA1. Uh, now, AA1 is a multi-target uh, molecule. It inhibits uh, many different types of uh, cardiac uh, ion channels uh, with uh, varying uh, uh, affinities. So, uh, in uh, um, Cardiomyocytes isolated from guinea pigs, uh, a highly toxic uh, natural compound, uh, acondidine, uh, shortens uh, the cardiac action potential. And this shortening uh, can be um, more or less reversed uh, by um, A1. And in, um, um, in ra rabbits, uh, acondidine uh, induces a variety of uh, uh, arrhythmic behavior, and all of these can be reversed uh, by A1. So A1 together with uh, carnitine um, can um, uh, um, normalize uh, the uh, heartbeat. So uh, this is an ongoing project where there are obviously uh, many things we need to do to really eventually make this into uh, a drug in particular. Uh, so next I want to uh, switch uh, gear to talk uh, uh, about our recent work on the uh, triple mail uh, channels with a short introduction about these uh, lesser known uh, chip channels and then I'll show you our work on uh, a, a fragment uh, of triple mail one and then the full length uh, triple mail three. And this work, uh, was uh, done uh, with a collaboration with uh, Professor Xue Mindi's lab at Tsinghua University. And without this collaboration, this work uh, would not have been possible. Uh, the biochemistry, <coughs> x-ray crystallography, and modeling was done by uh, Li Minghui. Uh, electrophysiology was mainly done by a graduate student, uh, De Yuan Su. Uh, all the cryo-EM uh, experiments and an analysis uh, were done by um, uh, Xiao Yuan. Uh, Zhou uh, under the supervision of Professor Li. So uh, chip and male channels are members of uh, the chip channel family. They are also called uh, mucolipins, uh, and they are so named because mutations in the founding member, chip and male one, causes a lysosomal uh, storage disorder uh, called mucolipidosis type 4. So trip, uh, ML channels are non-selective cation channels. They conduct a large 
uh, monovalent currents and uh, divalent uh, currents, uh, as shown by these IVs obtained uh, by Hao Xinxi and David Clappen. Uh, ML channels are uh, mainly localized in uh, uh, endosomes and lysosomes, so they are uh, uh, essential uh, for the endocytic pathway. Uh, some ML channels, such as ML3, are also uh, targeted to the plasma membrane. Now, uh, mutations in ML1 causes uh, mucolysis, uh, mucolipidosis type 4, as I mentioned. This is a very severe uh, lysosomal disorder, uh, storage disorder with very severe uh, neurodegenerative uh, profiles. Um, so far, uh, no mutations have been in, in tube ML3 have been linked to human diseases, but there are two spontaneous uh, um, uh, mutations in mice called uh, very tint uh, uh, Wadler mutations that produce very severe uh, phenotypes, including uh, the ones listed here. So currently, uh, there are no uh, cure for uh, ML4. All the ML4 causing mutations are loss function mutations. So an attracting, yeah, an, an, an attractive idea uh, in the field is to uh, selectively stimulate triple ML3 uh, to uh, compensate for the loss of function of triple ML1 because triple ML3 functionally uh, and in terms of uh, localization are very similar. Uh, to that of uh, ML1. Now, um, many uh, small molecule uh, activators have been found uh, by different groups uh, for the triple ML channels. One of the most potent activators is MLSA1, as shown by this work from uh, uh, Hao Xu's lab. And uh, we used MLSA1 to obtain the the open state structure of uh, triple ML3, as I'll show you later. Uh, now, lysosomes have uh, unique conditions, uh, including low pH, uh, relatively high uh, uh, sodium uh, concentration, and high calcium. And the lysosomal membrane is enriched with uh, PI3, 5, PIP2. And so, um, um, works from many labs have shown that uh, triple ML channels can be regulated by these lysosomal uh, factors, and also uh, they can be inhibited by PI45 PIP2, which is more abundant on the plasma membrane. And under uh, physiological conditions, it's thought that lysosomal triple ML1 uh, is constitutively open, but uh, uh, ML3. Uh, channels are uh, closed. So in order to better understand the triple ML uh, function and regulation, we uh, solved uh, the structures of a very important uh, domain of triple ML1. Uh, that domain is the, the one-two linker, and we also solved uh, the structures of full length uh, triple ML3. Uh, this one-two linker uh, between the first two transmembrane domains uh, comprises more than one third uh, of uh, uh, these uh, triple ML subunits. Uh, it faces the, the lumen and uh, uh, contains three uh, ML4 causing missense mutations. And also, uh, this long linker is present in a closely related trip P uh, channels, but not in other uh, trip channels. So, um, uh, uh, last year, we reported the, the crystal structure of uh, the triple ML1, 1, 2 linker. Uh, this is the, the view uh, from uh, the top, and this is the, the side view. And so you can see clearly it's a tetramer with a large hole uh, in the middle. And this pore, we call it a luminal pore, and it's lined by a loop uh, we call luminal pore loop. The luminal pore loop is uh, highly electronegative uh, and contains three uh, negative charged amino acids. So this region has uh, uh, a total of 12 uh, negatively charged amino acids, making it highly attractive for uh, monovalent uh, and divalent cations. 
uh, these aspartates are quite important for uh, the calcium and the pH regulation of uh, TRPML1. Uh, when these amino acids are mutated, uh, calcium and the pH regulation are altered, and I don't uh, have time to go into the details of the regulation, but um, um, the, the, the gist is that uh, uh, TRPML1 uh, can be regulated by both calcium and pH, and it's inhibited by calcium, but pH can uh, relieve this uh, inhibition. And these aspartates are important for calcium binding and for uh, the pH-induced protonation. Now, uh, the, the, as I showed you earlier, that a one 2 linker forms a tetramer, and this tetrameric assembly is important for the assembly of the full lens channel when uh, two amino acids in the uh, uh, assembly interface in the one 2 linker are mutated to anonine. Uh, the mutations then disrupted the assembly of the full lens channel, uh, uh, abolishes the, the current, and mistargets uh, the channel from lysosomes to uh, the ER. So we tried very hard to solve the, the, the full lens structure of uh, uh, ML one but uh, we failed. Well, uh, many other labs eventually published uh, those uh, 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 structures. In the meantime, however, uh, we were uh, fortunate to uh, get uh, the structures of uh, full lens structures of human uh, ML 3 and uh, we solved the three uh, structures in three different conditions. Uh, uh, APO ML3 at pH uh, 7.4, uh, MLS1 complexed or bound structures at uh, 7.4, and uh, uh, APO uh, uh, channel at uh, uh, pH 4.8. And so these structures represent closed, open, and low pH inhibited structures with resolutions from ranging from good to just okay. And these structures uh, provide information for the assembly, uh, like an active, uh, activation, location of the activation gate, uh, ion selectivity and the calcium permeation and regulation by uh, pH and PIP2 as our go through uh, one by one of at least for uh, uh, some of them. So this is the, the structure of the full lens channel viewed from the side and from the top, obviously, it's a tetramer. And uh, the, uh, 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 it has a, the classical uh, domain uh, swapped configuration. And looking at the structure of a monomer, you can see uh, the transmembrane domains, the voltage sensor domain, the pore domain, uh, there is a cap uh, on the luminal side, and uh, uh, we call it uh, a polycystine mucolipin domain. It's formed by uh, the one two linker, and uh, um, um, in this structure, you can see that both S1 and S2 form long extensions, and S1 extends into the PMD, S2 extends deeply into the cytoplasm. Now looking, uh, zooming in on the ion selective filter, um, in both uh, the closed and open channel, you can see that the selectivity filter is lined by the side chains of these two aspartates and the carbonyl oxygens of these two amino acids. And the, the, the filter is wide in both the closed and open channel, ranging from uh, 6.1 angstroms to 8.3 angstroms. Uh, so the, the, the selectivity filter is wide enough to accommodate uh, partially uh, hydrated uh, monovalent and divalent cations. So these features uh, provide a good exp explanation for the non-selectivity among uh, monovalent cations and for calcium permeation. Uh, looking at uh, the entire ion permeation pathway, uh, one can see that the narrowest uh, region of the, the, the uh, pore is at this position here, I-498. Uh, um, in, in the closed state, it's, uh, uh, very, it's completely closed. 
and it opens up in the MLSA1 uh, bound uh, uh, channel. So this, we think, is the activation gate, and it is the only gate uh, in this channel. And this gate, the so-called lower gate, opens uh, from, so this is a morph of the, um, the APO and uh, the MLSA1 bound <coughs> structure. So you can see ICE-498 uh, uh, opens up and uh, the S6 uh, undergoes uh, both uh, dilation and rotation. Um, as such, the pore opens from uh, 5.3 angstroms in the closed state to uh, about 10.4 uh, angstroms in the open state. MLSOA1 binds in the pocket uh, between uh, S5 and S6 of the same subunit and S6 of an adjacent subunit. And below uh, pore helix 1 uh, and above the S4, S5 uh, uh, linker. And this general location uh, in many other channels can bind to various ligands, uh, natural or unnatural. And the location uh, of this, uh, uh, the binding pocket provides a good explanation for the effect of uh, uh, this mutation at this position, uh, A419. So A419P is one of the uh, very thin webular mutations that makes the channel, uh, make the channel constitutively open. So uh, the mutation by changing alanine to P uh, presumably causes a kink uh, in uh, S5 and uh, that somehow <coughs> then would more or less perhaps work uh, as the binding of MLSA1 uh, to cause the channel uh, to open. Now, uh, ML3 uh, conducts very large current at pH 7.4, as you can see here. And this current can be completely inhibited by uh, pH, low pH uh, 4.6. So to, to better understand how pH regulate this channel, uh, we solve the structure at the low pH uh, and as well as uh, at neutral pH. And this uh, movie is a morph of the, uh, uh, these two structures. So looking uh, uh, from the side, you can see conformational changes in many regions of the channel. Okay. And then we are going to uh, look at the channel uh, from the structures from uh, uh, top down. So here you can also see large conformational changes, in particular uh, you can see that uh, the PMD uh, rotates uh, uh, um, with reference to the transmembrane uh, domains. And in particular, notice that uh, the large conformational changes in the, uh, if I can play this one more time. Okay, so again, uh, uh, changes uh, in many regions. Uh, of the channel. <clears throat> I, again, I want to emphasize this is just a morph, all right, uh, from one structure to another. And so, uh, uh, in addition to this overall rotation, and uh, you can see this swinging motion uh, of the, uh, the uh, um, luminal pore loop. Okay. So the changes in luminal pore loop is probably triggered by protonation of these uh, luminal pore aspartates, right? And uh, we, we hypothesize that the, the uh, protonation of these aspartates uh, causing uh, the, the, the large changes of this region, which then is propagated through S1 uh, to the lower gate to cause the channel uh, to open, and that would uh, uh, be one explanation for the pH, low pH inhibition. Now, another important amino acid for low pH inhibition reported in the literature is this amino acid here, H283. Uh, interestingly, uh, in our structures, H283, uh, the side chain can be uh, clearly visible, but it does not interact with any other amino acids. 
So how can then protonation of this amino acid uh, uh, cause pH inhibition? Uh, we don't know uh, uh, the answer, but one possibility is that protonation of uh, H2AD3 can cause it to interact with uh, the negative charged uh, uh, head groups of membrane lipids. So uh, we hypothesize then that uh, uh, when uh, H2AD3 is protonated, uh, it uh, interacts with membrane lipids, and these interactions then cause a change, in, a conformational change in S2, and that propagates uh, to the lower gate to cause the lower gate uh, to close. Uh, but we need to, uh, of course, test this hypothesis further, both structurally and functionally. So, uh, in both S1 and S2, the luminoside contains amino acids that can function as uh, pH sensors. And the pH, uh, the, the, the protonation of these amino acids causes conformational changes in, in S1 and S2. So in that sense, uh, these uh, uh, transmembrane segments function as allosteric uh, uh, transducers. And I don't have time to talk about uh, what P, uh, PIP2 does, uh, but since we don't have structures uh, in complex with PIP2, uh, I don't know why this pops up. Um, I, I just want to speculate that uh, perhaps PIP2 binding to these uh, amino acids uh, also causes conformational changes in S1 or S2 to regulate uh, the, the closing and uh, um, opening of the gate. So uh, before I finish, I just want to mention that uh, last year, four other groups reported uh, structures of full lens uh, TripML3 or TripML1. And these structures are uh, quite similar uh, to the structures uh, we have obtained, uh, I, I just showed you. So um, to conclude, that we solved the structures of uh, closed open and low pH inhibitant uh, uh, states of uh, triple ML3, and uh, this uh, uh, I498 of S6 forms a single uh, lower gate, and the selective filter is lined uh, by uh, both uh, side chains and the backbone carbonyls, as in many uh, uh, non-selective and calcium uh, permeable ion channels. And low pH uh, can inhibit, I didn't have time to show uh, these functional experiments uh, in detail, but low pH can produce both fast and slow uh, inhibition, and the low pH can cause uh, large conformational changes, as you uh, saw in those morphs. Uh, the luminopor aspartates and the H283 uh, can function as pH sensors, and we speculate uh, that uh, the S1 and S2 uh, function as uh, allosteric transducers in both pH and the PIP2 uh, regulation. So lastly, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions? Kira. Jack, really, really nice work. Uh, is there any uh, selectivity between the action of KIC4, P2, and Yes, uh, so we haven't done any uh, work uh, related to uh, PIP2, but Hao Xin Xu's group uh, has done a lot of work uh, uh, on PIP, PI, uh, PIP2 regulation. So PI35 PIP2, which is uh, enriched uh, on the uh, lysosomal membrane, activates all triple ML channels. Uh, PI45 PIP2, which is on the plasma membrane, inhibits these channels. So um, if I may, um, so, and, and the Hao Xin's group has identified these amino acids here as PIP2 binding sites. And uh, I think uh, PI3, 5 PIP2, uh, I don't, I forgot <laughs> which one, which were which binds which. 
Okay, I don't have that slide. But anyway, somehow, uh, the binding to these two different regions then cause different uh, effects. Um, now to understand how the binding of uh, different PIP2 causes different effect, I think we really need to uh, solve structures uh, with these different uh, uh, PIP2 molecules and to see what kind of uh, uh, conformational changes uh, take place. Annette. So the, the histidine that interacted with the PIP no pH, that was luminal, right? Luminal, and yes. So what is the pH in the lumen? It's about 4. So it's a 4.6. So would that change very much or would it then always be inhibited? That's a very good point. Uh, excellent point. So as I mentioned, uh, it's thought that PIP, uh, TRIPML3 is constitutively closed, is normally closed. So in under physiological conditions, with intact lysosomes, TRIPML3 channels are closed. So then what do they do then? So uh, there are other studies showing that when lysosomes are damaged, for example, under conditions of... Uh, pathogenic uh, invasion, you know, uh, and things like that, then uh, the pH uh, uh, is neutralized, and that would then relieve the inhibition of these channels, and the channels then uh, can conduct the calcium, and the calcium can then trigger lysosomal fusion with the plasma membrane. Uh, that's one way to get rid of, for example, damaged lysosomes. So in, in the context of autophagy, in which there is this autophagal lysosome building up, so do you know if the activator MLSA1 somehow affects <coughs> autophagy, and this has any notion about what's the function of this channel in this particular cell context? Yeah, uh, again, uh, Hao Xin Xu's group, uh, he is really very active uh, in the in the uh, field and in lysosome physiology and cell biology field. So his group has shown that uh, uh, in other types of uh, lysosomal storage disorders, uh, activation of TRIPML channels using MLSA1 can rescue some of the phenotypes. Um, you know, that's all we know at this point. But in general, uh, it is, uh, uh, it has been shown by many groups that TRIPML1 plays a very important role in lysosomal uh, physiology, uh, including autophagy. And the lysosome movement, uh, positioning, and all that. Okay, very quickly. Uh, That we that uh, we 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 didn't do any single channel recording, so we don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so it you know um, we can uh, have more uh, uh, talk more later, but uh, in trip ML one the three D mutation, uh, the mutant channel is functional. But in TRIPML3, the channel is dead. And why that's the case and all that, I guess we can uh, talk about later. Okay, thank you very much.